one, two, three, four. I honestly was just making that up on the spot. Uh, I don't know why I felt had the idea to just open up this vlog with a very poorly improvised song. Um, but whatever. Anyway, <laughs> welcome to this installment of Mike's Vehicle Vlogs. Uh, and as I mentioned in that uh, poorly on the spot song, um, this is another Aztec vlog. Um, so I just wanted to uh, kind of give you guys an idea of uh, what's going on with the Aztec. It's been a few vlogs now since we've done anything with it. The last time you guys saw a vlog on the Aztec, we removed the fuel filter and then we had an issue getting the new fuel filter on because the one quick disconnect um, actually snapped off when I was trying to take it off of the filter. So needless to say, we had to go in and uh, I was kind of worried that we were gonna have to get an all new nylon line and run it to the tank. But thank, thank God there was only, you can buy those quick connects. And then um, the only thing that I had to do was chop off the, there was probably about this much of the old line where the barbs were still in it. So we chopped that off, um, took some warm water uh, because the nylon is very stiff and you can't just push the new connect in it. So I had to soak the line, the, the end of the line in some warm water for a few minutes and then it was able to give the line some flex. So we pushed the new one in there and um, I got the fuel filter in. So um, yeah, we got the fuel filter in. I did start it. Uh, you know, for just a few minutes, um, once I got the line, or the fuel filter back on, and I did notice that I'm still leaking gasoline um, from the return line. Uh, now I put steel stick on the old line, on the rusty return line, which obviously has the leak now. And um, you know, it actually held up for a few minutes while the car was running. I didn't see anything leaking, uh, and then after a few minutes, it started leaking again. So the steel stick temporarily worked. I don't know if I can just put more around the line, maybe throughout more of the line, maybe even. But um, I think, uh, you know, obviously the line has to be replaced. And we're getting to winter. I mean, it's, you know, it's freezing outside now. It's not as cold as it can be. But, um, you know, uh, we're probably not going to be doing a lot of extensive work on the Aztec once we really get into winter. So I just want it to be running enough now. Uh, to where, you know, I can go out and start it up, you know, every once in a while uh, throughout the winter, make sure it's it's still running and stuff. And um, that's where I want to be. So before we, you know, obviously get the Aztec on the road, which there's still a lot of other things that we got to do to it to get it roadworthy, um, replacing that return fuel line has to be a must. And we're probably, as much as I hate to say it, going to have to replace the entire line from the uh, nylon portion under the car to the actual fuel rail uh, on top of the engine and that's I might have to take the plenum off and take some other things off to get to it um, yeah I'm probably gonna have to I don't think there's any way around that one but we'll see when we get there we'll, we'll uh, you know we'll work on that but in the meantime uh, I want to address an issue that I noticed has been happening with the Aztec uh, briefly and it's actually gotten to the point now where um, you know it's, there's a little bit of cause for concern and this I hope this is a, a simple uh, fix uh, lately I've been having problems with keeping power 
in the car. And by this, I mean the last few jump starts that I've done, the car has run solely off of the alternator and has made no attempt to even charge the battery, uh, which is why I thought the first battery that I, I bought for the Aztec I thought was completely kaput because I was not getting any charge. Um, once you turn the Aztec off, everything goes dead, like nothing, nothing stays on. Once the key is off, it's like, it's like turning off a light switch. Now this is, this has been a, a situation when I even bought the Aztec, well the, when I bought the Aztec it had a really, really bad battery. So I thought maybe that was a, uh, you know, the chance that that could be, but uh, I'm really hoping I don't have a short anywhere because I threw the new battery in, the one that I just bought, I hooked it up, it's been hooked up, but last night I went to go charge the battery um, and I put it on the charger and it started charging the battery, but I went to look out there, um, you know, after like an hour or so to check on it and my charger was saying the battery was bad. I went to open up the doors, you know, and stuff, and there was just no power in the Aztec at all. So it really seemed like there was nothing going on. Now, the one thing that I could think of, um, you know, since it is a side post battery, they have those little tiny screws with the, um, well, actually, I bought a couple, but, you know, those are basically the like the terminals. They go into the terminals and then... They have like the hex heads, you know, and you, that's what you would clamp the charger to. And um, well, the, I noticed when I was done putting the Aztec back together and I put the battery back in and stuff, um, the positive one looked like it was in in bad shape. And I actually bought that one from uh, a junkyard when I bought the car because I didn't like the one that was on there already. Um, but I think um, there was some corrosion, like some rust that had developed and I tried to clean it off before putting it back into the battery. Uh, and the negative one isn't too far behind it. So I'm really hoping that maybe they're just, you know, poor. Uh, so I bought some two brand new ones uh, and I'm going to go out there now with you guys and we're going to take the old ones out and see if it makes a difference. Um, I'm just hoping that, you know, we don't have any kind of other shorts uh, going on with this because this anything electrical can be anything you know and I'm not really I'm not really you know electrical inclined <laughs> I don't have gadgets and I don't know how to do anything electrical really um, so I'm really hoping that this will resolve that okay so here we are again so anyway the negative one you can see you know, it's corroded from the outside. The one that I pulled off of that other uh, rendezvous or whatever it was, uh, the inside of it's messed up and I don't know, the only other thing that I can think of is, you know, this ground is also pretty corroded looking. That could be an issue and I don't know if this would have anything to do with it but that could also be that. I mean, it just seems like there's a lot of things. <laughs> Hopefully it's something along these lines, but I'm going to start off with replacing those screws on the terminals. Alright, so now that those are off, you can see how this one you know, has some rust and stuff on it. To get this off, you just basically pry the little rubber off around it. And then you just kind of pull it on out. Yeah, so see, it kind of rusted. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. Um, the outside of this one looks good, but we're just gonna we're just gonna replace it anyway. And the other one, I didn't dig it off yet, but it might be a little harder to get to because it's back here. Plus, I gotta peel the rubber off that one. Trying to get the rubber parts back on is isn't all that easy, at least with this one. So yeah, it looks like there might be a little bit of corrosion on this, uh, but I don't really think that has anything to do with it. I think it's I think that the actual post 
screw might be the issue. Man, it's almost like you have to destroy those things just to get the bolts out. Anyway, this is the negative one. That's a lot worse than I thought it was. Because you don't see all this when it's in there. So yeah, that could have been a problem. Anyway, now that those are out, we'll try to put the new ones in. And we'll try to actually make it look uh, like it was never touched. Okay, so this turned out to be a bigger pain in the butt than I imagined. But... At least I got this positive cover looking a little bit better than it was the last time. And the negative one, the negative one was really difficult to work with, but it's all in there sealed up and whatnot. So uh, now that I moved everything, I'm gonna have to reposition everything. And then I'll plug it in, or not plug it in, but you know, hook the battery up, see if there's any difference. And then I'll throw it on the charge see if there's any difference there also. Let's hook the battery charger up now. Um, I'm gonna have to turn my light off and revert to my phone, but we can go ahead and hook these up first. It's not plugged in yet. All right, those are on. Let's turn the light off and then we plug this in. All right, so charger's on. Well, it's not charging yet. Uh, terminals are still hooked up. Let's hit the button. Now it says charging. Doesn't say anything about it being a bad battery yet, so that's good. But uh, I think I'll leave it like this for a little bit. And uh, I'll come back out here and check on it and see if there's any difference. Hopefully... I heard a noise. What is that? Huh. Sound like something was popping in the car. Speakers? Nothing's on. Maybe uh, power to the amplifier or something? I don't know. That was weird. Okay. Well, like I said, I'll come and check on it and see if it's still charging in a little bit. Greetings. It is the following day, following night. It just got home from work, as you can clearly see. Let's see if our battery held up. <sighs> nope. All right, well, so it says that it's fully charged, but the bad battery icon did come on. So at this point, I guess the only thing I can really do now is try to see if it's going to start. Let's open it up and see if we have any lights. We do. Okay, well that's good. Well, let's start. I don't know, this seems to be pretty good so far. <laughs> see? I wonder where it could be. The battery round. Oh, see, I just moved something. Oh. And 
Now she's alive. So we got, yeah, we have a electrical connection issue somewhere. And every time. I wonder what the deal is. I have no idea where the rest of these battery terminals lead up to. I pulled on the one harness down there. Maybe if I could put the camera over here somewhere, with, I wonder if it'll spark or something. It's dark, but I wonder if, if I just let it sit there, maybe we'll see something. Alright, so that harness, the one, it goes under, it goes under, it probably goes to the, the computer, maybe. I wonder if it's the same, if it happens to be on the harness that was undone for a long time. Because this harness was out of the loom for a while. Oh, it's, it's, is it the positive? See, I just, I don't know, it's weird because we just put the new screw in, but we moved the positive, but that, see, that's tightly connected to the negative also, where it splits off. The negative one doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. If I try to wiggle the negative, I got nothing going off. Wiggle this positive. Now it seems to be fine. Oh, right there. Man. Ain't this some stuff? As soon as we go to jump to turn it over. Oh! And there's our scream, of course. Okay, and you can see our gas leak. It's a little more persistent than it was before. So obviously I can't keep the car running for long anymore. Especially with it being close to the exhaust. Or the cat. Uh, no service engine light at this time. But that's probably because the computer was unplugged. Is it running off the alternator? Eh, it didn't dive down as like it used to. So it's got some battery charge. Because when, when I noticed the battery wasn't doing anything at all and I'd turn this on, it would go completely dark for like a split second. So it's not really doing that right now. So right now she's got battery contact. And uh, let's see if it goes dark. Nope. Okay, so right now she's she's sitting pretty good for some reason. I don't know. Maybe I'll recheck that connection. But it's on tight, so that's. I wonder if it's the actual harness. I 
I wonder how long it'll sit like this. It's already kind of dimming, but the battery really hasn't gotten a whole lot of play. Should probably be dead in a few days anyway. Still on. I don't know, it's a mystery. But the positive terminal seems to be the culprit for some reason. Okay, now the true noise test. So I got the belt disconnected. It's sitting off of the harmonic balancer at the bottom of the engine. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's loose at the top. Let's hope there's at least enough juice in this battery. And let's hope that I didn't hit that when I was going down over there. Let's see if there's enough juice to at least get it running for at least five seconds. Oh, we still got power, so that's good. All right, real quick. Let's see how well, see if we get any noise. Oh no! So we still have a noise without the belt. Charging. All right. But on the good side, the battery was held up for a little bit. So if I have that noise, if I have that noise without any thing on the belt rotating with the exception of that balancer but um, I, I don't know if that would be possible for it to make a noise without there being a belt on it maybe I don't know what is that All right, belt's back on. Obviously, the noise is still there. Seems to be a pretty strong battery. Still got one mystery kind of solved so far. Well, technically two. We know for a fact that the positive battery terminal seems to have some sort of short in it. And the second mystery kind of being, well, we at least found out that the screaming noise is not coming from the belt or pulley assemblies. For some reason it is coming from somewhere, somewhere around the engine. So, at least I know now that we are obviously not dealing with a <laughs> cat hair. We're not dealing with a belt or pulley or harmonic balancer situation. A harmonic balancer wouldn't make that noise if there wasn't anything actually on it, would it? That just doesn't seem doesn't seem feasible for some reason. But uh, what else could that possibly be? Uh, I'm gonna hit up. Google and other YouTube videos to see if I could find anything remotely close to the symptoms that I am showing. But guys, what do you think it is? What what could have possibly went wrong to cause uh, to cause this situation? Now keep in mind when the engine starts to slow down at idle. Well, it's a rough idle right now, obviously, because we have other things going on. But when it slows down, it goes away. When you start to rev it up, at the slightest rev, it comes back. And the pitch really doesn't change. It sounds to be the same pitch. What could it be, guys? I am completely stumped here. Uh, in the meantime, let me see what I can find out. So, other than that, if you found this vlog to be interesting, give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe. Check out teespring.com slash doors slash Mike's Vehicle Spotlight for all of your MVS and vlog merchandise. 
And that's all I've got for you guys this uh, this evening. So I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching, and take care.